Hey everybody. Okay, this freaking thing. So today we are gonna crack open the new Dark Glass Exponent 500 and see what comes tumbling out. If you haven't heard about this amp yet, here's the elevator pitch. Dark Glass made a clean 500 watt head and packed a plethora of digital programmable effects into it. There are a bunch of colorful drives, including some iconic Dark Glass sounds. There's a compressor, there's a tube preamp, you have modulation effects like flanger and chorus, you have reverbs, you have delays, you have the famous Dark Glass cabinet simulator, you have the classic Dark Glass EQ, you have a non-classic non-Dark Glass EQ. To access all of this goodness, you can use your phone or a laptop and the free dark glass suite to add effects to your signal chain, control the individual parameters of each effect, map any one of those parameters to the physical knobs across the front of this amp. You can manage your signal routing and of course even save and share your creations. Do all these clever ideas add up to a great product? Does the Exponent 500 have a place alongside or even in front of other units like the Helix, the Axe FX, Fractal, or a Kemper? Come. Let us reason together. Okay, so right out of the box, you have a clean head with 500 watts of Class D power and a fairly intuitive knob layout across the front. Right here is where you set your input game with a knob labeled input. And hey, it's the first dark glass amp with an input knob. Your knobs here have little graphics indicating lows, low mids, high mids, and treble, and then there's the elusive, is it this one? And then there's the elusive E knob. In fact, you'll notice that these knobs, in addition to their EQ graphics, are also labeled A through E, so store that fact in your brain for later. Master volume over here rounds out the frontal knobbery. You have a mute switch right here, which will also fire up the clever onboard tuner and a preset button called the preset button. Here on the rear, you're looking at the usual suspects of combo speaker out, an effects loop, headphone and XLR out, a ground lift, MIDI and USB-C sockets, a voltage switcher, and the plug plug. Okay, that's the body. Let's talk about the brains. To really get the most out of this amp, you're gonna need your phone or a computer and the free Dark Glass Suite app. Once you pair with this critter by holding the preset button and hitting a button on your phone, you are ready to run wild through the trampoline park of free included digital effects that are really what this amp is all about. The upgraded Dark Glass Suite has an inviting browser and effects manager that probably took me five minutes to get going with. Controlling and editing these effects works from the touchscreen of your phone quite well, but you can also map any parameter from any one of these effects to the physical knobs on the front of the exponent. Remember when I told you to remember all the knobs? That's called a narrative payoff. In fact, out of the box, when you touch the knobs on the front of the exponent, what you're actually controlling are the knobs on the amp EQ module. Module? Do they call them modules? I'm calling them modules. In the pedal board view on the app, when you want to add an effect, you just press this big plus button here and it gets added to the beginning of your signal chain. If you want to move it anywhere else in your signal chain, you press and hold it and drag it and boom, there you go. You could also do this with the signal routing coming out of this amp, which I think is amazing. So you could have the cab sim just on your XLR out and have just your headphones be compressed. There is a CPU limit here and it isn't huge, so it is a bit of a game of Apollo 13 to keep everything under the load limit. So those are the very non-basic basics. This amp comes with a ton of stuff loaded inside of it, but you need some external control of your own to get at them. More on that later. So to really feel this thing in action, I actually set a little challenge for myself. I wanted to record a song where everything except the drums and percussion was just bass. In fact, I only used one bass. In fact, I used just my Fender Elite Jazz in passive with the bridge pickup soloed and tone all the way up. I didn't so much set out to do this as set it that way for one part and then sort of forget to change it later, but I am going to act like it's a big moral victory. The song for this video has five components, a bass, a rhythm guitar, a lead guitar, sort of synthy, sustainy, pedal steel sort of thing, and a delay pass. I'm going to break down the signal chain I used for each one of these parts. Here we go.
As I said at the top, there are a lot of bass and guitar multi-FX units already out on the market. Things like the Helix, the Neural DSP Quad Cortex, the Axe FX Fractal. Some of these are compact and inviting, some of these are unwieldy and ruinously expensive. The Exponent occupies kind of a strange space in this context, being a bass-focused and all-in-one powered amplifier. I think the advantage that the Exponent has is obviously the dark glass name and the legacy of the included stomp boxes. If you bought all these pedals separately, you can see that you would actually be fairly ahead of the game by just getting the Exponent, although that is true, or should be, of any multi-effects unit that you're looking at. I feel like the Exponent addresses a fairly specific concern, but one that I see a lot in the comments on the videos that I do for other dark glass stuff, and that's for someone who knows that they're interested in the dark glass line of drives, but isn't totally sure which one they want to use. Are you a B3K person or an Alpha Omega person? Am I the sort of person who wants to use a vintage microtubes as an always on sort of fattener and then fire up a B3K if I want an all out distortion? If that's the sort of thing that keeps you up at night, this is definitely for you. And of course, the mother of all YouTube comment questions, does my compression go at the beginning of the signal chain or at the end? Well, now you are a tap and a swipe away from your own epiphany. While I was working on this video, I actually wrote down the phrase suspicious amount of reverbs and delays, but I'm glad they come in the box because they invite me to spend some time messing around with effects that I'm probably not gonna pull my whole actual physical pedal board apart just to mess with. I know they can be very context specific on bass, but man, they are really fun to screw around with. The effects themselves, I think they sound great. Moving them up and down in your signal chain with the press and drag of a finger is amazing, which means to me this almost doubles as a teaching tool. A big barrier with messing around with some of these other multi-effects units can be the user interface. Some are great, some are sort of clunky and daunting. I haven't spent a ton of time with all of those other units that I mentioned, but it's hard for me to imagine a user interface that is as easy to get going with and intuitive as the Dark Glass Suite. As a bass player, it's nice not having to scroll past the 700 guitar amps to get to the literally three bass effects. There are a few things that we need to discuss for this to be a complete review. Minor grumbles, like none of the delays have tap or tempo input, so you have to kind of just do your best with the time knob. Also, the delays aren't stereo. Also, why are there three reverbs, and I wouldn't hate having individual presets for the individual modules either. It's easy to get to a usable tone pretty quickly, but it might be nice if you're new to some of these effects like reverbs and delays to have some cool places to get started. Also, when you're adjusting a parameter in the app, it doesn't go continuously as you move your finger. It sort of snaps to wherever you moved it once you lift your finger off, so it's hard to hear something happening gradually or smoothly unless you make a lot of like very small moves one after the other. I know we're nitpicking, but isn't this what you're here for? But let's end on a high note. I will keep saying it, the user interface is awesome. It's intuitive. It really calls out for you to just mess around with it. The Leo preamp sounds really, really good. Mapping different potentiometers in the app to the different knobs on the front of the amp is genius. And it turns the front of the exponent into kind of a customizable sort of quick menu pedal board. And then you can actually hear things happen smoothly as you turn the knobs. So it's just a matter of figuring out what you wanna hear adjust very gradually and just mapping that to one of the knobs on the front of the amp. I really like how easy it is to change the routing of different elements of your signal. I once had a very friendly disagreement with a front of house engineer on which preamp sounded best on bass. I liked one, he liked another one. So thankfully we had enough room in our monitor and front of house board for me to have one preamp that I just listened to in my ears and another preamp that he felt like worked better at front of house. This gives you options like that. Hope I'm not gonna get into too much trouble for saying the following, but there is more coming for this thing. Like the element and the Photon, the firmware and the chassis are here and I wouldn't put it past Doug and the gang to be working on some exciting new updates as we speak. So there we have it, a lot of base forward creative options at your fingertips, a welcoming intuitive interface to get you playing fast, sound engineer friendly routing options, weighs less than a casserole. This has been the Exponent 500. I've been Amos, you've been amazing.